I'm on like, the range hell. last like two weeks ago. Dude, I'm like, when are you gonna be Brendan? Right. Like, how do you like? There's just random people I didn't know. I might have to block you out. I might not have to not play you again. Just retire undefeated. Again. That, that's that's one way to <laughs> guarantee you never yeah. lose is never play. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Super excited to have Tim Yelverton straight from Mississippi to Long Beach. He's in Long Beach now. And uh, we're gonna be playing a vlog here on the back nine at Hartwell. It's a night lit golf course where Tiger Woods learned. Uh, he played this course probably 10,000 times between the time he was three and the time he was uh, 14 or so. So uh, Tim uh, just got off the plane and everything else. Uh, Tim's a short game expert. Tell us a little bit about like uh, people you've worked with and your your history of golf and really what you work on with students. Well, I I grew up playing uh, junior golf, mm -hmm. uh, much at a sort of a place like this, minus the lights. Okay. Um, just a place where you know families came out, played golf. My whole family, we we started playing golf the same year. My dad, my mom, my brother, myself, we all learned how to play well, golf. Let's take together. it up. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. like let's all learn how to play golf together, yeah. and then uh, yeah, then I worked my way through junior golf. Ended up playing college golf at Southern Miss. Did you uh, ever win a tournament? At yeah, Southern Miss? yeah, won a few tournaments there. Great, great. Um, that was that's D one. Yeah, awesome. yeah. We played. Uh, I played a lot of college golf with a lot of guys you see on tour now. Uh, okay. You know Graham McDowell, Brant Snedeker, okay. all those guys. Um, yeah. Played a lot of golf with them, and uh, then would they know you if they saw you now? Yeah, I think most of them would. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. I think cool. most of them <laughs> yeah. would. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, just did that, and then uh, play. I tried playing professional golf for about three years okay. after after full college. Time yeah, pro, yeah, yeah, full time, mm -hmm. and um, mini played tours, mini tour golf. Yeah, yeah, all over the country. Monday qualifiers. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, and then after that, I uh, got into coaching, and so mm -hmm. I've been at Old Waverly Golf Club for ten over ten years now. And your concentration, like it says on on your website, is thirty yards and in. Yeah. So we're really talking about pitching, chipping, putting. The scoring zone. We're gonna get more into it as we talk. We're gonna do like a walk and talk conversation. And uh, this first hole we have is 118. And uh, we'll let our, our guests be, have the honors. We're playing today with, come on out guys. We're playing today with Joe, who you know, and, uh, and Brian. Hey guys, all right, so, so uh, let's see how we do. 118. 118 and that's dead straight center. out of a 757. <laughs> yeah. Coming from the other side of the country. All right. That's the beginning and the ending of Tim's excuses. That, no, that's at least the first one. <laughs> that's at least the first. That's at least the first. Oh, Joe's ready. All right, go ahead, Joe. It's a good swing, Joe. Swing though, right at it. Go for it, Tim. So, Tim, you, have you played in a PGA Tour event? Yes, I, I, I played in the Zurich Classic in New Orleans uh, last, no, no, not this pre, not just a few months ago, but in 2016. Uh, 16. 16 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the last year before it we went to yeah, to the two-man team. Yeah, because you've won event. some professional events. Right, I won. Mississippi our, uh, Open, right? Yeah, I've won the I've won our our state open. I won uh, our section championship, which is Mississippi and Louisiana. PGA section. That's right. Yeah. So that's how I got that's how I got the exemption to uh, to play in the Zurich. Gosh, that's a good looking swing. There's a running hole in one thing here. What's and that? If, if, you, if you were here on Wednesday, if you're on Wednesday, a lot of Asian tour pros, a lot of okay. good amateurs, a lot of, uh, they had a PGA Tour guy here, Michael Kim, just a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, anyway, they, they all play 18 holes, skins game. And there's a running pot for hole in one. And it pays out like four times, five times a year. Yeah, skins game on Wednesday night. Last last week, I won. Right. Ten high left. Seventy dollars. Uh, Seventy bucks last week. One there you 30, go. One skin. Nice. So eighteen holes, one thirty and in. 
Is that kind of the? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. I think 145 is the longest. Okay. But that's on the front side. The, the back side's a little shorter. Cool. Here we go. All right. Here we go. All right. So Tim, the short game expert here. Walk us through what you're thinking. We'll get more deeper into this. Tim and I are going to be making a very in-depth short game video coming up soon. But yeah, just kind of walk us through your well, process here. Well, the, um, the, the first thing I always look at is the lie of the ball. Yeah. In this sense, in this case here, the lie is pretty, pretty standard. Uh, slight up slope, so it's going to come out a little bit slower than it would if it were on a, a level lie. Yeah. Um, I want to carry it. I haven't hit any shots here, so I don't really know the firmness or the speed, but I'm assuming medium, know, a little probably, soft. Probably yeah. want to carry it somewhere a step or two on the green. What Just, degree do you have there? This is 54. Okay. So, so what do you, when when you're when you're going through to hit that shot, what are you feeling? Yeah, right now after I've kind of somewhat seen the shot I want, I'm just going to make a few practice swings, and I'm really just brushing the ground to to just kind of feel a little bit of interaction with the club. Yeah. And uh, I'm just trying to be consistent in where I touch the ground, and then also in the depth of the divot, um, I want my strike to be consistent there. You trying to get this close? Or you trying to hold it? I'm trying to make it on the left side of the hole. Okay. And it hit the right edge. That's a good motion. Under read. Uh, under read. All right, grab the stick for me. That's good. Looks good. Oh, nice man. putt. I loved it. It wasn't me. It was the green. The green was a little bumpy. <laughs> But for a short course, this place, today is not a perfect example of it, but usually has fantastic greens, great little short game area here around, you know, surrounding. Very good. Where's your ball, Joe? Lost. Oh, so that's another L for Joe on this vlog. Uh, Ramon, everybody else, you can ring it up. Joe, it's really just one down, right? <laughs> it's not an L. Oh, oh this it's a stroke, stroke play. <laughs> A stroke play. Yeah, be better golf rules. Okay. All right, so Tim, one thing that I wanted to ask you that I've actually been having some success with it recently, but are you the type of guy for wedge shots, are you the type of guy that likes to have a certain backswing distance as far as like, like in a Dave Pell's kind of way where right, like this is 50% of it, this is 75% of it, this is 90% of it, and then the full swing? This, you're talking about like distance wedges? Yeah, yeah like yes, to control yeah. your distance wedges. Yeah. yeah, I tell people all the time they can call, I don't care if they call it one, two, three, or if they call it oh, the, like on the clock. Oh, like distance one, distance yeah, two. That's yeah, that's right. right. Ha half, three quarter full. Mm -hmm. If they want to say 7.30, 9, and 10.30 like Pell's, yeah. that's fine, just label it. You know, give it give it a label. You know, at the minimum, have three shots per wedge. Now, is it too nerdy? I've thought of doing it, but I think it would look too to actually put the numbers on the wedge. Sometimes no, I've got, I know players that do that. With, like legit players. Yeah, and okay. then I know some that write it with sharpies on the back of the club face. Not, uh, not on yeah, the club obviously face, on the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so from so this should What's be that? about 88, Joe. Yeah, I can go no, that's good. So 88 for me, this is a 100-yard club, so I'm going to feel my earlobe here. Mm -hmm. And that should be perfect. Pretty good, right That's pretty good, yeah. All right, Tim. 90 yards. So a normal shot with that club goes how far? 105. 105 with your 54? Just, yeah, just smooth, just a good smooth full sand wedge. If I try to really hit it hard, uh -huh. 110. So what are you going to do to make this only go 88? I'm going to choke down just a touch, and uh -huh. then I'm going to make what I would call a, a, my three-quarter swing. Okay. To try to take it down to 90. Pin high, right? Yeah, I, th I think it's probably f 15 yeah. feet right of the hole. And I normally, uh, I normally hit, hit, you know, kind of draw it, maybe yeah. a little more sometimes than I want to. So that was about where I was looking. I know Zach Johnson and, and some other re and really good wedge players, like from 50 yards, from 40 yards, even from like 20 yards, are trying to f almost feel like a little bit of a draw swing to it. Do you yeah. like that? Yeah, I would say a, draw, a little bit more of a draw would be common. Then a fade. 
as far as, yeah, because naturally if you do this, you think of the Ferris wheel going like this. You see a lot of short game, like amateurs swinging kind of like this ways. Yeah. But the, the pros you're saying are, are swinging more. Yeah, because the draw is going to be shallower. So you're going you're gonna to have that you're going to have that wider bottom, um, where if you get where if you get kind of steep and down and across it, then to keep from pulling it, you have to hold the face open. Well, when you hold the face open, that adds loft. Uh -huh. Then the ball pops up, and it's more of a deflection hit, so it's harder to gauge distance. Too, right, then. right, and you'll de like that, that like that flight right there. Yeah, that you're going to see tour players hit flights more like that. Lower, you know, flatter, yeah. yeah. More so than balls that shoot up and shoot down. Now, are tour players flattening out their trajectory by actually like having shaft lean and impact, or it's it, like how are they doing? Yeah, that? yeah. I mean, they're going to have a little bit of shaft lean, and then yeah. they're also going to have, you know, their their body's going to be a little bit in front of it. They're going to have the, they're going to have the club face more down. If you think about it, being a racket, yeah, or a, a tennis racket or a ping pong paddle, you know, it's going to look more at the ground, yeah, rather than looking at the sky. And that's the, that's the biggest thing. So like if you, if you start going down and across it yeah. to keep from pulling it, you have to hold the face off. Yeah. So then now you have a kind of a steep angle of attack mm -hmm. with a lot of loft. And that's, that's definitely not optimal for being a good wedge player. If you take somebody that maybe airs a little bit in, with a club path out to the right, well then, to keep from hitting it to the right, they're gonna sort of deal off the club and turn it down. Yeah. Well now you have somebody that's gonna launch it flatter, lower, whatever you wanna say, and then have a shallower bottom. I would rather somebody air a little more on the side of draw than fade. All right, here goes Joe. This is the one poorly lit hole. So lights out. Oh, back kick. He got collared. Yep. There you go. All right. Beauty. No, blocked it really badly. Have you had a hole in one? Yes. How many? Four. Okay, cool. And the funny thing about it, my first one it was in college. Yeah. We we played uh, we played pretty pretty bad at a college event, and our coach made us play nine holes uh, from the ladies' tee. Yeah. The next the very next day when we got back. Yeah. And I made a par. Uh, I was a par four. And I made a hole in one on par four. Oh wow! For how many yards? So it's two sixty. Oh wow. Three wood. So that was my first hole in one. You should play the Long Beach Open, which is like a really high level. I remember a lot of people talked about that, yeah. Yeah, like if well, you were on the mini tours, you yeah. would have had a lot of people travel out here for that, so. Looks good, Joe. Now, Tim, do you when you go out to a par three course like this, do you tee it up or are you just? Kind of uh, it depends down? on it depends on how high the grass is. Uh huh. Um, and uh, that that'd be the biggest thing. If the grass is is kind of high, yeah. Oh, okay. Just because I want to get as little grass between the club and the ball as possible. But certainly, like in a tournament, playing on on par threes, you always tee it up. Yes. Yeah. But for practice out here. All right, so 80, 80? 81, I think. I'm in the bunker. That was a bad so, shot. So, you're like, I mean, I'm not hammering you at no, all. No, tell me. But, like, there, that's, that's one of those times where the, so your club face was kind of open at the top. So, yeah, that's a lot of loft. Like, yeah. Okay. Adding and even then, more. And then you move a, a, a little down and across it, and then you see that ball go up, down. Yeah, it just went. So it goes straight up, straight down. The more loft you have on the golf club, yeah. the more the face is going to dictate how high or how low the ball launches. And then the less loft you have, the more the face dictates whether it starts left or right. So a good thing to think of, not only in a clock kind of way, but also, like, let me give this ball this the same loft i'm giving it at address okay 
Right. Is it? Is yeah, that sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So think of the. Yeah, that was a lot better. That was better. So in TrackMan world. So so the club face dictates most yeah. mostly where the ball starts horizontally, yeah. right? The horizontal launch of the golf ball. Um, now you're talking about full shots, short yes. shots, everything. So, so yeah. the less loft you have on the face, the more it's going to make the golf ball. So let's say you come into, you get a club face a little open. Uh -huh. Well, a three iron is going to start way right, but yeah. a sandwich is going to start way high. Okay. So the, I always tell people the club face's job in the short game is more to dictate how low or how high the ball launches, where the club face in the full swing is to tell the golf ball where to start more left or right. There we go. Oh, do it. Canned it. Nice. Is that a good shot? I haven't played here. You guys count those? <laughs> good job. Good putt, Tim. Thanks. It's hard focusing. No, way to go it right. is kind of hard to see. Yeah. Usually you got a lot of and you got a lot of contrast with you know road lights, camera lights, light poles. Usually like during twilight when I play, it's like they It's a fun I love there you go. Late in, late in the, you know, late in the afternoon. All right, 115, Tim. What, uh, what club are you going to hit, and what's the, what's the normal yardage it goes, and what's the yardage you're going um, to Normally, that's, that's actually why I put this club in, was a 50. Is that a gap wedge? Yeah, because I, I didn't like trying to hit pitching wedge um, that short. Oh, okay. Um, it, it, in all honesty, I'm going to have to hit it kind of hard, I think. A little, little bit of breeze into us, and I'm kind of stiff. What's the normal stock yardage of that one? 115. This was norm. This would normally be perfect. Oh, okay. I just, I, I think I'm gonna have to hit it pretty good to get it there. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to go a little harder at this one. Uh, I just came back front edge. Tim, is there a yardage that you think? Or maybe it's not a yardage, but where you think like the short game stops and the full swing, full swing starts. As far as like like that swing you just made, that looked like a full on golf swing. Yeah, you know. I, yeah, you know, I think there's. You know, I, I, I'm not saying they're identical, but I think it's it's a progression. You know, mm -hmm. moving from a chip to a pitch to a. Half wedge, three quarter wedge, full wedge, all the way through the bag. Nice. Okay. I, I I don't you know I don't really see them as being that different. Yeah. I know some players use different grips around the greens than they do for their full swings. That was a nice strike, Joe. And, and like if, if you know if you notice your swing and Joe's swing, they're very different. Yeah, like Joe so Joe has a Joe has a pretty strong face at the top, yeah. strong close. But he's you real call shallow it. through the ball. That's and right. I'm taking really big divots. Right. So he kind of holds he kind of holds that club off, swings a little out to the right. He he hits pushes and draws. Yeah. Sort of like I do too. Um, your face is more open at the top. Uh huh. Your arm shifts out a little more. Yeah. So then, so you, you're going to move more left if you if you want to say through uh -huh. the strike. You just you know like there. The only difference in that swing you made there, and then the hole before that went short. Yeah. There you had the club face square. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so open. Well, and, and the most important thing is is that that you understand how much loft you're about to deliver. You know, if you're trying to hit it low, it's fine to deloft it. Yeah. If you're trying to hit it high, it's, it's fine. To add, yeah, um, because some shots need to come out lower, some shots need to come out higher. You know, like this shot right here, I'm gonna hit 54 with a little little back of my stance, and I'm gonna have the club face sort of sort of de lofted. Yeah. So when it comes back, it's gonna be looking more at the ground because I'm because I see this ball coming out low 
and sort of running up the slope. So it's just real important that when you get to the top of your backswing, so to speak, you don't like fan it and that yeah. would like change yeah, the loft like of the club. Great chippers, yeah. chippers of the golf ball are very rarely going to do this uh -huh. in the takeaway. Now they okay. might be a decent bunker player or pitcher out of the tall rough, but when they want to, you know, the guys that are going to come in and hit like the little low skipper or mm -hmm. one that even releases, you know, you're going to see those guys come in with the face looking at the ground. Sort of run up the hill kind of like that. Gosh, never played golf here ever in Long Beach before. And you're, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just such an awesome sound to that strike. Okay, awesome. So you're just home for the summer then. Yeah. Do it! Oh. Oh. Nice putt. The last two feet was straight right. <laughs> Are you, the, now do you like putt a lot from the fringes? Are you like, oh, like almost always chipping? Um, no, if, if I'm in the first cut, I mean, and, it, and once again, it always depends. But I mean, you know, if I'm a foot or two off and the surface is pretty pretty uniform from there to the green, I'll putt. Now, if it's kind of scraggly or if I've got a, you know, a weird lie or I need to carry it. Or know. between you and the green is a yeah. little unpredictable yeah. as far as how it'll roll over it. Right, yeah. right. And I tell people, you know, if, if the ball were right here, what would you do? And if the ball were right here, what would you do? You know, and I mean, would you chip right here? No. And then usually they're like, no, no. Then I'm like, well, why would you chip from here? Yeah, it's still pretty perfect. Now, if you yeah. were right here, and you had this in between, you know, so if you had a, you had kind of a, a bare spot or a sprinkler head or something like that, yeah. then yeah. But, you know, I think, I think there's a lot of wisdom to putting when possible, even for, even for tour players. Yeah. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks to Tim for coming out. Stay tuned and hit subscribe to see the rest of the back nine where Tim gets into some deeper detail about this move that he likes to make with the wedges to hit it really solid and also how he likes to control his distances to be able to hit it exact yardages with the wedges. While Tim was out here, we did a short game school that was a big success, it was a lot of fun. And then we've been planning it for months, but over the course of two days, we made the Be Better Golf short game scoring system. It is over three and a half hours of highly detailed content all about the short game. Shots from 30 or 40 yards and in. So it's all about chipping and pitching and bunker play and really spends a lot of focus on making good quality, tour quality impact with your base motion and then we base everything else off of that. Tim worked really hard developing this plan for people to, to be, be able to develop an elite short game at home through this. Also with it, you get a short game troubleshooting guide and since you guys are watching this early, also included if you order in the next week, you will get the one hour demo that Tim did at El Dorado. If you guys heard uh, earlier on the channel, I was talking about Tim was going to be giving this speech, presenting his philosophy well that's available too but you get it with the short game scoring system if you get it all within the next uh, couple days so check it out there'll be a, a longer video about exactly what it is later but if you go to bebettergolf.net slash scoring you can see more information about it or check it out all right guys thanks for watching bye